All right, I am here with Carlos Hernandez. He is a film photographer based out of Portland, Oregon. He has been doing this for over, I got my notes right here, uh, 12 years, and he shoots roughly 15 weddings a year. A quarter of those are in the Portland, Oregon area where he resides, and the rest are destinations, so he's traveling out for couples because they really want Carlos. Uh, and in this video, we're going to talk about, what did I say we were going to talk about? Why you need <laughs> why to hire, hire a why, professional. Yeah, why hire professionals for your wedding day? Um, and so let's get into that. Uh, I've been doing this for over 10 years. Carlos has been doing it for 12. We've seen a lot. We've heard a lot of stories. Um, Carlos, why don't you kick it off? What are questions that you hear? Like when people are thinking like, do I really need to hire like the professional or can I just get so-and-so uncle Bob, Yeah, uncle Bob, or maybe somebody with life experience? Like what are they, you know, what kind of experience would they get differently if they hire somebody who's been in it for a long time and has been, honing I think we were craft? just, we were, we were just talking about this, uh, couple minutes ago about things that go wrong during the, during the wedding. Right. Yeah. Um, for example, we were talking about how technology sometimes can fail. Um, things can, can go wrong. And just by being a professional, by having all of that experience under your belt, um, you know what to do. You're prepared. Um, you have backups, even a second photographer, if need be, um, all, all those things that kind of come into, someone who's a professional, someone who's been doing it for a long time that most of my couples don't even know that something happened or there was a little hiccup on something. Yeah. I mean, you and I talked about we're overly prepared and we're type A and we want to make sure that everything's going to go as planned, but sometimes things don't happen as planned, right? Yeah. Um, but just being able to have a professional there, someone who is going to react properly or properly um, in the face of adversity or whatever happens during that day, I think, I think it's something that most couples don't necessarily think about. It's it's something that most people don't do it more than once. It's something that uh, just happens the one time and you can't redo it. So having a professional that knows that and realize that I think is really important. Yeah. I mean, a big thing about weddings is, like you're saying, it, it, it unfolds and we're there to document, not recreate it. Um, like a first look, you a bride walking down the aisle you know, a bride putting her dress on and turn around the mom sees her. There's so many moments where it's yeah. like you either get it or you didn't. Um, and it's funny. I think some people like being in the industry, you tell people like, oh, I'm a, I'm a wedding videographer, you're a wedding photographer. And people are like, oh, I could never do that. They just have this yeah. sign of, oh, I can't do that. But it's funny. It's because I feel I like lean into that. And prior to being in the wedding industry, I was an EMT working ambulance. And it's the same thing. It's like, there's a huge mess going on or not saying weddings are huge messes, but you just lean into <laughs> those high intense moments where you have to be able to perform, whether it's CPR or whatever it is. Um, and so, yeah, with weddings, it's to, like, go ahead. I was going to say, and you have to anticipate what's going to happen. Yeah. Kind of, I'm assuming with an EMT, e EMT, um, you have to anticipate what's going to go wrong if you do X or Y. Yes. And with photography too, you have to, you have to be on your toes and ex expect that, you know, if somebody's doing a toast, you, you know, there's going to be some sort of reaction mm -hmm. and then capture that reaction. Or like you said, you know, the mom is going to walk in or the dad, they're going to do a first look. You, you kind of know what's going to happen and you anticipate it because you've seen it. You, you've done it many times and you know what's about to happen. All right. I'm going to give my moment spiel. I so couples, we'll get to your question. You said there's a question that you get hit up with a lot. There's a question that it's not a question that I get hit up with. It's a, it's a desire couples have. And the desire, when I usually hear this desire, I usually know I'm like, this is going to be a good fit. Like I'm who you're looking for if that's what you're wanting. And usually it's couples saying, I want the candid moments captured or something along the lines. I want the film to feel natural. Um, they just don't want something highly produced and they don't want somebody making them or their guests feel uncomfortable. And when I hear that, I, I kind of talk about it. I, I, I kind of put some meat and bones on that. It's like, hey, here's your idea. And this is how I work that out on the wedding day. And so what I tell couples, I say, for me to make emotional films, one, it's my job to make you and your guests feel as comfortable as possible. And so that, that dictates like the clothes I wear, the gear I bring, like I don't want to make it overly produced or make people feel uncomfortable. Additionally, it's, it's that thing of you had just mentioned anticipating and it's very much that it's like, okay, something's about to happen. So there's an action and then there's like, okay, great. Who's responding to that action? Is it, 
the bride on the first look and the groom's responding? Is it the bride putting on the dress so the mom's there responding? Is it um, a first dance and, you know, the son just dipped the mom and it's like the son dipped and the mom's responding, you see it, or the guess is it dad in the corner responding to what he's seeing and you finally see emotion coming out of him. And so it's like what I tell couples is like my job to anticipate what's going to happen and then just hopefully I've made you guys comfortable in those moments can happen naturally in front of me and I'm not negatively impacting them so that then I can document it so that you guys can have it. I remember there was a moment, it was at Waverly Country Club, which is timely because I'm heading there this weekend for a wedding and the bride had just got her dress on and the mom is there and they're both like, you know, faces up, dabbing tears to try to not wreck their face. And she gave her daughter like this gift from like her great grandmother that she knitted in a, um, like a tuberculosis camp or so oh, there wow. was some kind of thing. And she was like isolated for like a year and she did this knitting, they give it to each other. And I love it. Cause I'm like, I obviously could be wrong, but I feel like they don't feel like I'm there, you know, even <laughs> though I'm kind of there and I'm just holding, I'm not moving much. Cause it's not about fancy yeah. camera movements. Like I just want to document this. And I guarantee like, what a sweet moment that those two just had that, you know, just happens to look beautiful because the light's coming in at the right angle and they're there and, you know, they're both in their dresses and it's just a moment that I pulled out and I'm like, I have to, like the bride has to just, and it's like a moment that's like wine. It's just going to get better with time. As mom gets old, you know, as things change, as family members pass, it's just like, what a sweet, sweet, sweet thing. Anyways. It's so interesting that you would say that. Um, I, I remember well, it wasn't too long ago that I was using a camera called Pentax. Yeah. And if anybody watching and they know what this Pentax is, it's a film camera, but it is so loud <laughs> when you hit the shutter. So <laughs> I dealt with that for a very long time just because I, I love the camera. There's several other cameras out there um, that do the same job in their medium format and they do film and they do beautiful. There's there's a um, obviously the, the contacts where everybody uses and then there's the uh, Mamiya that a few people use. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't want to go the contacts route just because I knew how temperamental, temper, I can't think temperamental, of the word. Uh, is. temperamental, well, not good for a wedding day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so I, I stood to the, uh, the Pentax just because I knew it was going to, you know, work for the whole day and nothing was going to happen, but it just, it bugged me so much that it was the so noise. Loud. The noise, yeah. right? So because I wanted to keep moments quiet and intimate, kind of like what you were doing, yeah. I had to switch. I'm like, I, I, I can't use this. It's like messing with the moment. And the so I had to switch back to, opinion. yep. So what you so switch then to? I have to, I switched to contacts for a little while. Okay. Um, and then I'm still using that, but I'm now trying the Mamiya just because the contact still, it's so it's so hard to use sometimes because yeah. you know if it's if it's a little bit cold, a little bit too hot, stops working, and it's you know those types of things happen just because it's uh, technology from a few decades ago. Yeah, but it was just um, what you were talking about being in the moment and being able to capture that, and you want to have maybe not the most fancy camera, maybe not the most fancy movements. You just want to be able to capture the moment as it's happening and yeah. be able to be sort of a fly in the wall. I tell couples that I'm like. I guarantee like that, that moment I was filming, I guarantee you'd be, well, I don't know. I'm trying to think how to drive that home. Like if, even if I captured that just on my iPhone, you'd still love it to death. Now, granted, I don't want to capture it on my iPhone. I want it to look as beautiful as possible, but at the same time, it's the moments that you'll look back on. Yeah. And yeah. Um, let's talk about something that can come up when a couple's planning their wedding, they're trying to figure out their budget and, you know, they're really excited for the day. They lock the venue down and now they want to document it beautifully. Some couples might feel like, Hey, why does a professional wedding photographer or videographer cost so much, maybe so much more than maybe some other options I'm looking at. What are your thoughts about that as couples might bring that up with you? Yeah. So it's, um, I feel like it's, it's like any other business, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you, the cost comes in with experience um, and experience. Like you said, you've been in this business for 10 years. I've been in the business for 12 years and we know how to react towards 
instances so we know how to predict when things are happening and we're prepared and you know most people don't think about like we've been in this business for so long we have insurance we have things that we have to cover ourselves as well so the cost of those things increase as you become more experienced because you have to make sure you have everything you need for the day of the wedding yeah, you have so camera gear backup camera gear right. bags um at waverly so i have insurance i have a certificate of insurance for waverly i have there's all these things that come along with it yeah so i think those are the things that most people don't realize that it's happening it's just like oh he's got a camera he's going to just take some pictures but it's a, it's a lot more than that and it comes with like we were talking about experience mm -hmm. and so and what, it just go ahead so just like the craft of being able to capture something beautiful. So you can also have somebody who's experienced. You can also have somebody who's been doing this for a long time. You can have somebody who has all of the gear and all of the insurance and all that stuff as well. But then there's something else about the eye for photography, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, my wife has been doing this with me since we started, but she can tell you that. I, she can't capture a moment. She doesn't know how to look for those things, but somehow that comes really easy for me. So those are the things that you expect in a professional, um, not not just you know being able to take a picture, but being able to take a picture well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, as I've learned more about photography and it's influenced my videography, with video, there's certain aspects we're looking at. With photography, it all stands on the photo, in my opinion, right? It's everything about the photo, the composition, just everything, the lighting. Yeah. Whereas with video, it's a little bit, you're, you're dealing with movement and all these things. And there's, you know, it's not like you have a static cup all the time. But um, I've always really enjoyed that. And it's made me appreciate and be able to kind of look at, oh, that's a good photo or that's not such a good photo. Like to determine, like, well, why is that one good? Why am I attracted to that one more than I'm attracted to that one? And um, like compositions has, has always really intrigued me with that. Yeah. And it's something that you can't just learn in a couple of years. It takes, no. it takes a while to, to, train. to craft. You have to train yeah. and see it. Like yeah. I'm always curious when I'm in certain situations, photographers who I know well, or who I love their work. I'm always, I always wonder, I'm like, gosh, how would they see this? What would they be framing up right now? What would they be looking at? How would they be using the light? Things like that. It's very interesting yeah. and it's challenging. It's a constant struggle to get better and better at it. I mean, you're always trying to learn, right? Yeah. I mean, there, I don't think any, every, anybody could say, you know, I've made it. I don't think there's anything more to learn. I've, I've got it all in my bag. I feel like every year I spend a little bit of money from my photography to like, in, on myself to like better myself, whether it be equipment or whether it be classes or yeah. wh whatever it may be, just to make sure that I'm always learning, always evolving, always getting better at my craft. Yeah um hopefully that was helpful we could probably keep talking about this but if you have questions leave them in the comments down below if i see a comment that i think carlos could answer i'll go nag him to go answer that comment for me um i sure will as a side note too i think i just realized i think i've been in the industry 12 years now i think it was 10 years pre-covid and my brain is stuck in 10 year mark i'm like There's wait it was 2010 when i started this yeah um <laughs> So Nobody counts those years. It's okay. I, I stopped counting. I'm not like, wait, I, I'm like stuck record from like two years ago. Uh, another thing too, if you do end up hanging out with Carlos or hiring for your wedding and you guys are chatting, you have some downtime, be sure to ask him how he met his wife. I'm not going to get into it, but it's a very <laughs> interesting story. Um, with that being said, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can look in the links down below. I'll connect you to uh, it's Carlos Hernandez dot co. 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 And then Carlos Hernandez photo on Instagram. Okay. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for listening. I did another video with Carlos that you can look just past this video where I just kind of talked to him about what it was like for him getting in the career 12 years ago. Uh, with that being said, again, thank you so much, Carlos, for hanging out and chatting. Thanks for having me. This was really fun. I appreciate it.